For this project, I sealed the front and the back of both mirrors with the quick seal caulk. On my last project, I did a larger mirror and I did not seal either side. I don't know what I was thinking, or I guess I wasn't thinking. I just uh, thought that maybe it was sealed. Uh, I'm used to using picture frames with uh, regular glass and I always seal those. Anyway, this uh, last project that I did, I ended up with a major resin leak, a big mess, and I just didn't want it to happen again. So after this dried for 24 hours, I was able to clean off the residual on the mirrors with a razor blade. It cleans up real easy. And after I did that, I took painter's tape and put it around the perimeter because um, it has little tiny holes around the perimeter. I don't think anything will leak out of it, but I just wanted to make sure after what happened last time. Next, I dump out all the glass, the colors that I feel like I'm going to be using for the project, and I sift through them and look for specific colors, sizes, shapes, and oftentimes I end up switching it out even after I think I'm satisfied. So even though this video is sped way up and it looks like it only takes me a few minutes to figure out what I'm doing, actually sometimes it takes hours and hours to complete the project. A lot of times I'll use jewelry pieces to enhance my projects. I pick them up at garage sales and Goodwill. I used crushed shells and strips of stained glass to decorate the bottom of the mirror. The crushed shells you can get at most any hobby store. I think I might have purchased these at Michael's. The stained glass, I bought sheets of stained glass from Hobby Lobby. They have quite a variety up there. I went ahead and cut both sheets of stained glass into strips because I knew that I would use them for future projects. After I was done cutting them into strips, I put them in my 40-pound tumbler to smooth the sides. You have to be really careful while handling stained glass because it can cut your hands. After 24 hours of tumbling, this is how they turned out, nice and smooth. Then I finished decorating the bottom of the frames with some small seashells, and I used three little blue beads on each of them to simulate bubbles. Now it's time for the resin. So for this project I used epoxy resin Sing Wong. It says on S-I-G-W-O-N-G. -G. I'll link it in the description below. But it's an epoxy resin that I purchased on Amazon and it's a straightforward resin again, a one-to-one -one ratio. That's what most of them are. When using resin, I always have rubbing alcohol on hand to clean up any spills. I wear gloves and I use a respirator. Having said that, it is a very low odor resin, but you still need to wear a respirator. I mix the two resins together, like I said, a one-to-one -one ratio. I think I was using the end of both bottles. You mix it for two to five minutes. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you'll get. Be sure to scrape the sides and the bottom. I look like I'm stirring real fast in the video, but it's just because I have the video sped up. You really need to stir it very slowly. And then I pour the resin on, and notice I'm pouring it over the glass. Some people may not like the glass real shiny. They may like a frosted look. In that case, you might want to put the resin down first and then put the glass down on top of it or pour around it, whichever you prefer. 
even though it says it's self-leveling, you really need to smooth it out and make sure you push it into all the corners or edges to make sure you have full coverage. When you're done with the resin, you may need to rearrange the glass again because sometimes it will float a little bit. Um, one of the main things, the most important things, is that it's on a flat level surface. So now that you're done putting the resin on, you'll notice that there's a lot of little tiny bubbles. Some will dissipate on their own, but you're going to need to use a heat gun to get rid of them. So with the heat gun, it has two settings, a low and a high setting. I always use the low setting because with the high setting, uh, the strength of the air coming out of it can be so strong that it can blow the resin up over the edge. And on the back is the temperature setting, and I set it to 500 degrees. It takes a few minutes to warm up, and as you're um, blowing the resin, it can take up to five minutes to get rid of all the bubbles, just depending on how many bubbles you have. When you're done using the heat gun, you might need to rearrange the glass again, because the heat gun may have blown some of the pieces out of their position. I removed the tape from around the perimeters and no leaking. No leaking. <laughs> 